So all the networking vendors are going off to uh, Kubernetes conferences, containers, and it's all the thing. And we know that Kubernetes is all the rage. And I also know that most of you don't care about containers because, you know, who wants that anyway? But what struck me was is that when you look around at the market, Cisco's pretty much nailed down the legacy data center. Pretty much got most of you are buying Cisco products to do your legacy data center work, you know, the FIs, the trees, and all that sort of stuff. But if you're a VMware environment with VMs, pretty much they own all of the VMs. And their networking strategy, NSX, is pretty much the whole deal. It's everything. Once you've got NSX, you haven't just bought a networking solution because the switches underneath that pure software overlay kind of don't matter much. Doesn't as long as it's fast. You know, put some 10 gig, some or 25 gig in there. You really don't need anything else except a VXLAN edge. So, and NSX has been extending itself into containers. It's been extending itself into application firewalls, micro segmentation, security, so that you actually don't need a whole lot. So that doesn't leave a lot of room for other companies to participate in the VMware platform. There used to be a partnership, VMware would do this and they'd partner with who, you know, all the different networking vendors. And really now what we're seeing is them sort of move them out. It's not as easy for them to participate. They get access, it's certainly possible for interoperability to occur. Everybody can use an API to pull the vSwitch, but that's kind of, you're not kind of in control of your destiny. And it's not a good sales pitch. VMware is pretty much closing down that market. Very subtle, very subtle, but it's there. And Cisco knows that, and so does all the other networking vendors. And what they're really looking forward to is to see it, hope that containers replace VMs, so that VMware is not a leader in that space. Now, VMware working on containers, of course, we've had plenty of demos, but when we start looking at people like Big Switch, they're all out there promoting their networking with containers. And that makes sense because they need to be um, working on solving the problem of networking in containers. Now, when Kubernetes first came out, all they did was munge uh, IP tables to do NAT rules and said that was all they could do. And then later on, they brought in a networking plugin and hoped that various vendors would come up with solutions that would make it, well, fix the limitations of that. Where's the firewalling? Where's the strategy? More recently, we've seen BPF come into the Linux kernel, and we're now seeing plugins come in to replace IP tables using BPF, like Cilium, for example, is a recent one. And there's a whole bunch of others. We're even seeing uh, network accelerators uh, come in to accelerate eBPF, so uh, high performance networking cards so that you can get over 100 gigabits per second out of a very nominal server where all the, the networking is actually done in the NIC. So really what we're seeing here is that the networking vendors want to be in the container space. They want their plugins to be at the top of mind, but it's not networking people that are buying them. The networking vendors need to be there. They need to be convincing people to put their products into the container solution so that they're not frozen out of that market. That's an emerging market, it's an opening market, it's growing. So those networking vendors want to be in there. And that's why, when you look around, you'll see so much talk about networking and containers. It's not that there's any container networking going on. Nobody's, not many people are doing Kubernetes. And if they are, they might well be doing it at Amazon. Which brings me to a point. One of the things about container networking is it doesn't just happen inside of somebody's public cloud. It's also got to be integrated, in, I think, very much so into your software defined WAN. And it also needs to be integrated to a multi-cloud. So you might put a container in AWS and you might have some in Azure and you're gonna have some in the branch. I doubt you'll have containers in your legacy data center. That's probably not the short term. When I say short term, five to 10 years, I think that's more 10 years plus. You're not likely to build Kubernetes clusters inside your data center. You're much more likely to use public cloud, I think. That's not, that's not all true, but that's where I think it's going to move. So really what you want is a networking strategy that you know, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, they're the same thing. It needs to integrate with your SD-WAN and it needs to be done by your Kubernetes people, not by networking people. And that's why networking companies, I think, might be out at Kubernetes conferences. I'm Greg Farrow. I'm the co-host of the Packet Pushers podcast. You can find more information like this where we try to educate, inform and entertain you on networking and uh, cloud infrastructure more generally. Get on over to packetpushers.net and thanks for watching.